Joining us now on Halton News, the Executive Vice President, Clinical and Chief Nursing Executive at Joseph Brand Hospital, Leslie Motz. Good afternoon, Leslie. Good afternoon, Jason. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for coming on. And listen, every hospital story that is in the news right now is about staffing shortages. Uh, where does Joseph Brandt stand within that conversation? Uh, so great question. And we are, we are very in line with all of our healthcare colleagues in that we certainly have a shortage of healthcare workers uh, within Joseph Brandt Hospital. Our vacancy rate, uh, we previously shared, is running about 8 to 9%. Uh, that, that, that's fairly high and certainly has an impact. Um, but we are certainly, what we have not done at this point is, is uh, influence any access to services. So we really, you know, our teams are digging in and keeping access open to our communities. And we're really, really grateful for that. But we are continuing to work aggressively on, uh, on, on our vacancies and our recruitment strategies to try and get uh, load leveled again. And certainly um, making sure that we're looking at all opportunities, not only within local Burlington, uh, but looking for opportunities and partnerships uh, beyond our own community walls. Well, you talk about keeping open to the community, and unfortunately, one of the first entryways into Joseph Brandt in any hospital is the emergency room. Uh, we had talked about this during the pandemic numerous times about wait times uh, being so much longer. What do those look like now in the Joseph Brandt emergency room? Uh, so we were certainly seeing higher volumes in our emergency department and higher acuity. So meaning that, you know, as people are arriving in our emergency department, they're a little sicker uh, than they have historically been. And that that absolutely influences our wait times uh, because we do prioritize our patients based on their level of acuity and illness uh, for getting in first. So uh, we are seeing a bit of a slower wait time um, in, in our emergency department. And we, we compare actually regionally and provincially to make sure that what we're not doing is exceeding some of our targets. So, uh, you know, uh, our community can expect uh, that when they arrive, there may be some delays that they have not been used to in the past. Uh, but please know, as soon as you're in there, and we triage you, we know you're there, and we are doing our utmost to keep things moving along. And we do measure it to make sure that, you know, if we're starting to see unacceptable delays, that we start to look at some different resources to make sure we can try and catch up. Now, obviously, the delays go hand in hand with the staffing shortages. You know, one really doesn't happen without the other. So what is the reason for the lack of staff or staffing shortages? Is it uh, a matter of COVID precautions still? Is it taking mental health leaves due to stress levels over the past couple of years? Or are you nodding your head and I'm guessing it is all of the above? Check. It, it is. It's very multifactorial. Um, I, you know, there certainly we're seeing a higher, higher incidence of, of illness um, for our own staff, COVID illness. It's, it's alive and well in the community. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, unfortunately, uh, so our, our, our staff live in the community and, and run the same risks. Uh, certainly, they probably take some extra precautions. So as, as the community levels ebb and flow, so do our staffing illnesses ebb and flow. So we're certainly feeling that. Um, and, and we're also, you know, I, we are part of, uh, we've seen uh, resignations and people moving on. We've seen a lot of people choose to retire because they were at the age that uh, they could do that and that was an option for them. So we're certainly seeing some of that as well. You know, I think the good news story is we're also still seeing people applying for roles at Joseph Grant Hospital. And that's that's really what gives us a, a lot of sort of hope uh, that our strategies are working well. But, um, you know, the COVID has been really difficult on our staff. Um, people have decided to make lifestyle changes and, and and re, sort of review their lives and, and, and try and find balance in different ways. So it's very multifactorial. Um, and we do actually uh, uh, have frequent conversations with people as they're making changes to better understand their reasons why, to see what it is we can do to help with that and try and mitigate any sort of further exits from our, uh, from our system. So in a press release last week that Joseph Brandt put out, it said approximately 2,655 people are waiting for surgery. And that's just at Joseph Brandt. That is a number that absolutely blew my mind. That would be a number I would think maybe is in the city or the province, but that is just at your hospital. To me, as uh, someone who might be looking for care or have an optional surgery, I gotta say, it seems like an unacceptable number. 
Yeah, it, it seems like a very high number, doesn't it? And it is a high number. Uh, you know, the, this, this pandemic has uh, put a lot of delays in the surgical system across the province. And certainly we're, we're very much part of that as well. So early on, if you'll remember early on, there was actually direction to cancel surgeries. Uh, within the hospital system. And now we're in our recovery phase. Well, we're stabilizing and recovering from that perspective. So there are high numbers. We're monitoring very closely to make sure that what we're doing is identifying folks who have been waiting longer than, than sort of uh, others and trying very hard to prioritize those returns. We also prioritize surgical, um, surgical procedures that uh, uh, are more time sensitive, to be honest. So certainly we prioritize cancer surgeries and, and, and things where there can be a, a more significant implication to the outcome if we don't prioritize. So it's a real balancing act uh, as we continue to recover. Uh, and, and with the challenge of this wave, which is you know, what, what I call the, the wave of the healthcare worker, um, you know, really trying to optimize our resources with our current HHR. So we're moving along, we're making, we're, we're making some headway um, uh, with our procedure list and we monitor, we actually get a, a monthly um, number so that we understand sort of what's happening in our community and uh, making sure that we're moving in the right direction to start to recover. Uh, it's not going to be a quick recovery uh, for Joseph Brandt Hospital. I don't think it's going, I, you know, I, I would say it's not going to be a quick recovery for the province, uh, but certainly what we are doing at Joseph Brandt Hospital is seeing indications that we're chipping away and moving in the right direction. And that despite the HHR challenges, uh, we can continue to be able to do that. So we're really pleased and, and, and hopefully we'll be able to continue. Well, Leslie, it is definitely a, a big hill to climb and a large number to chip into. I wish you all the best and I hope things do get moving a little bit faster and you get the staff that you need because not only does it benefit the hospital, but of course, the community that is, is it is servicing. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we're committed to meeting the needs of our community uh, from whatever entry point you choose to enter our, our organization, the Emerge or, or our Surgical Services or any of our other uh, services. We, we are committed and we monitor very closely to make sure uh, that what we're not doing is, is uh, introducing further wait lists, et cetera, into, into our community. We know we need a healthy community um, and we need, we are, we're part of the bigger solution for that. So please know we're monitoring. I think it's really important that folks understand that uh, and that we're seeing uh, improvements heading in the right direction. Uh, so we're, we're really committed to continuing that. Leslie, appreciate your time today. Thanks so much. Okay, thank you.